Numerical Computation, Chapter 2, Video Number 9. We now consider polynomial interpolation with uniform grid. Uniform grid is um, a grid where you're interpolating points, which are called nodes. They are equally distributed on the interval. So consider the interval from A to B. And if you want to put in m plus 1 nodes in an equally distributed way, you would have n intervals. So here, this h will be the length of each interval, and which is the total interval length is b minus a divided by the number of intervals. And then we denote the grid points xi, which will be a, the left of the interval, plus i times h, where i is the index running from 0, 1 to n. So with this uniformly distributed nodes, we have a preliminary lemma which um, gives us an estimate on this product form. So we know that eventually in the error formula there is this product form. So we're taking care of it right now. So let's look at the product of x minus xi in absolute value, where i runs from 0 to n. So there are n plus 1 such terms multiplying with each other. And we say that this one can show that is bounded by the expression here, that is a quarter times h to the power n plus 1 times n factorial. And now we'll give a short proof for that. So first, if your x equals to xi, then one of the term in the product is zero, so the product is zero, and it's trivial. Now assume that x does not equal to any of the xi, and in fact we say x lies between xi and xi plus one for some index i. Okay, So we can have an estimate on the two terms, that is x time minus xi times x minus xi plus 1 in absolute value. So we have done this before with the a and b here. So if we just change them into a and b, and this is what we have, a quarter times b minus a squared, where this b minus a here takes this form and is exactly h. So we have h squared over 4. And now we can consider other terms in the product and say the term with the index j, so x minus xj, and this j shall be either bigger than i plus 1 or strictly less than i, okay, so other than these two terms. And then we know that x minus xj will be bounded by h times j minus i, so how far away the xj is from i. For j bigger than i plus 1, and then if you have j less than i, then this term here is bounded by h times i plus 1 minus j, still the difference between their indices, okay, for the case j less than i. And you can, you can check in all cases the product of all these terms, and altogether they will be bounded by h to the n minus 1 times n factorial. And this proves the result. Now putting these results back into the arrow formula, and then we have ex is less than or equal to this guy times the n plus 1 derivative times h to the power n plus 1. So let's denote the derivatives by this capital M. It's a bounded constant. So we have m, n plus 1 over s times n plus 1 times h to the power n plus 1. Okay, so here again, this capital M is just the maximum value this f n plus 1 derivative can have, which is also the L infinity norm of that function. So looking at this arrow formula, we see that in the end, the arrow depends on two things. One is um, how small the interval h is, meaning how many points you are interpolating. 
and second, this constant m, which is a given constant once your function is chosen. So f to the m plus 1 derivative, an upper bound on that function. We now take an example. Let's say we have f of x chosen to be sine pi x, and we want to approximate this by polynomials on the interval from negative 1 to 1, and we interpolate it with uniform nodes, and we wish to establish an upper bound for the arrow. So recall the arrow formula, we know that um, it is important to find the derivatives of the f, n plus 1 derivatives, and try to find an upper bound for that on the interval from negative 1 to 1. So let's start with that. So this is a sine function, so it's pretty easy to differentiate. You differentiate it once, sine becomes cosine, and then you have a constant pi coming out. And you differentiate it one more time, then you get negative sine, but then you have to multiply by a factor of pi. And then if you differentiate it even one more time, you get another pi factor here, so it's pi to the third of a cosine. So we see that each time you differentiate, you raise the power of this pi by 1. And then the rest is either a sine function or a cosine function, positive or negative. So if we want an upper bound on the absolute value for this n plus 1 derivative of f, we see that it will contain pi to the power n plus 1 as the the factor in front of some sine and cosine, which is bounded by 1 in absolute value. So we have this estimate, which means the constant m, m plus 1, in the arrow estimate now equals to pi to the power m plus 1. Okay, plugging this piece of information back into the arrow bound we have, that's the arrow bound, so we will put it in, m will be pi to the power m plus 1, and h will be b minus a over n, where b is 1, a is negative 1, so b minus a is just 2, so we have 2 over n to the power n plus 1. Next, we'll show some um, simulation result. So we actually um, run some numerical simulations in MATLAB, and we find these interpolating polynomials for this fx, which is sine of pi x, with a uniform grid for various of nodes from small to large, and we um, compute the max arrow, which we'll illustrate in a table below. Okay, so here's the table with the data. So on the left, the column n indicate the number of intervals. So we started with four, and then we double it, we have 8 intervals, and then we double it again, and with 16 intervals. And the second column here is the arrow bound, meaning the formula here, plugging in the corresponding n value and compute it. So we see for n equals to 4, that's 4.8 times 10 to the negative 1, and when n equals to 8, it's 3 times 2 times 10 to the negative 3, and for n equal to 60, it's 1.8 times 10 to the negative 9. And the third column is so-called measured arrow. It's the actual arrow with our interpolation polynomial done in MATLAB. So we see we are expecting the arrow bound to offer some idea of the magnitude of these numbers, and these numbers shall be bounded by the arrow bounds, right? So for n equals to 4, we have 1.8 times 10 to the negative 1, which is approximately one-third of that. So they are still kind of the same magnitude. For n equals to 8, this is 1.2 times 10 to the negative 3, so the same magnitude, and this is about one-third of that value. For n equals to 16, we have 6.6 um, .6 times 10 to the negative 10. So if you multiply this by 3, 
you approximately get that value. So we see our arrow bound does offer a nice bound for the arrow and then it shows us the approximate magnitude of the arrow to expect.